Hello friends, this video on wind storms and cyclones part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Air. So now that we understood this property of air, we will be able to understand how wind currents are generated. So let us look at the earth as a whole because in order to understand why wind currents are generated we need to understand uh, uh, we need to have the basic knowledge of the geography because the location of different parts of the earth plays a very important role in this entire mechanism of wind currents generation so <clears throat> when you look at the entire earth so there are certain regions which we are going to talk about right now so this central line, which you see at the middle of the entire earth, this central line is called the equator. And these two extreme sides are called the poles, North Pole and South Pole, right? Now, when we talk about wind currents, we are actually going to talk about the movement of air. And this movement of air is controlled to a large extent by the sun. How by the sun? That's because different regions of the earth receive different amount of sunlight that's because of the shape of the earth so the earth is like a sphere approximately a sphere so obviously let's say if the sun is situated here let's say if the sun is here so the center part of the earth the regions near the equator might be receiving more light when compared to the poles so this part might receive more light when compared to the poles. Now, whichever part will receive more light, more sunlight, what will happen to that part? So those regions will receive more light. So they will receive, uh, they will get more heated up because the sunlight not only provides light, it also provides heat. So this region, the equatorial region, it receives more heat Therefore, the air which is present in this region, this air will get heated up. So basically, they, the air will expand when heated up. So they will be lighter and they tend to move up. So the air from here will tend to move in the upward direction, either towards this direction or towards this direction. So basically, it, it's a sphere, right? So I'm not saying that, that the lighter air will move down. It is basically moving up. Now, since the earth is also rotating and revolving, so basically the air is moving away from the equatorial regions and it is moving towards the poles. So this is what I am talking about the warm air. So basically what is happening, the warm air, so warm air is present at the equator. So from the equator, the warm air tends to move towards the poles that is the north pole and the south pole now what happens to the cold air now as this warm air moves towards the poles now in the poles it becomes like too much congested so it is something like somebody else coming to your house and taking your bed so what happens to you you need to find another bed for yourself correct so therefore what will the cold air do so then the cold air they start moving from the poles towards the equator so they start moving towards the equator because their positions have already been taken by the warm air so as a result what is happening because of these two processes what happens is known as the wind circulation where the warm air moves from the equator towards the poles and the cold air moves from the poles towards the equator so this is called a wind circulation now Looking at uh, this logic, we understand that these warm and cold air will be flowing in the north-south direction because this is like the north pole and this is the south pole. So either the uh, air will be moving from the equator towards the south pole or towards the north pole, but every time it should be in the vertical direction, that is the north-south direction. But when we actually look at the direction, we see that it is not exactly north or south direction. Instead, it is little tilted, as you can see here. It is like not exa neither exactly north nor exactly south, so somewhere in between. 
Why is it that? That is because the earth is not static. The earth is constantly rotating about its axis and it is also moving around the sun. Now as it moves around the sun, then different parts of the sun, of the earth receives different amount of sunlight. Now by property of its rotation on its own axis, what happens is now since the earth itself is moving like this, so the direction also gets influenced and therefore it is not exactly north-south but slightly in between the two directions. And this is how wind currents get generated. So I hope this concept is clear because this is very very important. The generation of wind currents and here which is that factor? What do you think looking at this? What do you conclude that what is that factor which led to the generation of wind current? So the primary factor which was responsible was nothing but uneven heating of the earth. That is the equator is more heated when compared to the poles and why did that happen? Because of the shape of the earth. So the, since the earth is spherical in shape, so the sun which is located somewhere here is able to provide more heat to the equator and less heat to the poles. And due to this difference in heating, the temperatures at these two places are different due to which the circulation of air takes place and that results in wind currents. So uneven heating is the main cause behind generation of wind currents. So now we will talk about certain special type of winds which, uh, which tend to flow during day and night. So the daytime with, with the breeze which blow is often termed as the sea breeze. So the wind that blows from sea towards land that is given the name of sea breeze. Sea breeze would mean sea to land. Now we can experience these kind of uh, specific winds especially in the coastal areas because there we get to see the land and the sea next to each other. So let's see what is the concept of sea breeze. Now <coughs> during the daytime what happens is the land gets heated up faster especially near the equator. So in the equatorial regions land gets heated up faster. So when I say land gets heated up faster that means what happens? The air above the land is comparatively hotter when compared to the air which is above the sea. Right? Now this warm air. Now when the air gets heated up what happens to the air? The air expands. It becomes lighter. And therefore, it tends to move up. So this warm air which is lighter tends to move up. Now when it moves up, what happens here? A vacuum is created, some free space is created because the air here went up. So therefore, what happens is this cold air to, from the sea comes towards the land and it occupies this space. And then this entire cycle happens. So the air which went up, it took up the space of the already existing cold air there. So that air again came here. So this air came here and again the cold air came here. So the same cold air got heated up in presence of during the daytime in presence of sunlight. The warm air rises up again. It moves towards the ocean. Again, it flows towards here and the process continues. So basically the warm air rises up. So it takes up the space for the cold air and the cold air from the sea flows towards the land to take up the space which was emptied by the warm air. So as a result, what do you see? As a result, we see that a cool wind blows from the sea towards the land. So this is sea and towards land. So this breeze or this wind which blows from sea towards land during daytime is known as the sea breeze. So here also you see the same concept of warm air takes place and this entire process of heat transfer is known as convection. And we have learned about convection while we were um, discussing about the lesson on heat. There we spoke about convection and we have also discussed about sea breeze and land breeze. So just the reverse happens during night. So at night time uh, it is the cold air which flows from the land towards the sea. And that is why it is called land breeze. So land breeze would mean land to sea. Now during night time, 
the land will remain cold therefore the air which is present above the sea will be comparatively hotter so the warmer air will rise up and therefore the cold air from the land will move towards the ocean to take the space which was emptied by the warm air so as a result we will see that a cool breeze will blow from land towards sea during night time and this is called land breeze so this is the concept of land breeze and sea breeze thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience please do not forget to like and subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you once again